What if scientists discovered a way to stop the aging process? Humans would no longer have to suffer through the deterioration of the body and mind that has been part of human life, for as long as humans have been around. Barring exposure to disease or injury, we could live forever. But the resulting boom in the human population would inevitably place great strain on the Earth's natural resources, and the prospect of living forever might very well alter the way humans approach social institutions such as marriage and parenthood. The discovery of a cure for aging would thus lead to problems as great if not greater than the benefit of the cure itself. In The Postmortal, author Marjorie Drew explores such a scenario. Drew's narrative consists of collection of blog posts by fictional narrator John Farrell, in which he recounts the discovery of the cure for aging, or the cure as it is called, and the effects of the discovery on society. It was discovered in 2019 by Graham Otto accidentally while engaged in research directed towards developing a technique for controlling the color of human hair. While the cure does not make one immune from disease or death by accident, it does arrest the normal process of aging so that the person remains in the physical condition one is in at the time one takes the cure. As news of the discovery spreads, demand skyrockets. Some, including John Farrell, who can afford it find those willing to administer the cure on the black market even before it is has been fully tested and approved by the proper government authorities. Some segments of society come out in opposition to the cure from the beginning. The Catholic Church condemns it as sinful and grounds for excommunication, an opposition group known as Greenies, because they paint their heads green to signify membership in the group, antagonize those who choose to take the cure spraying them in the face with lie and carving their birthdays onto their arms to remind them of their real age. However, by and large, the cure is widely embraced by the population. The widespread participation in the cure leads to a number of significant social changes. One major one concerns the terms of marital relations. Instead of the traditional commitment, till death do us part, post-cure marriages are recognized as temporary from the beginning with partners entering into agreements about how their assets are to be divided when the marriage is dissolved 40 years down the line. Farrell, a lawyer, is instructed by his boss to specialize in divorce law to help meet the growing need for such cycle marriages. Besides changes in marriage conventions, there is also a shift in religious beliefs and practices, with worry over death on the decline, concern over the afterlife and the supernatural also drops. In place of traditional faiths such as Judaism and Christianity, the New Church of Man, which preaches that there is nothing greater than man, comes into prominence. Another change concerns how society deals with the distribution of the world's limited resources. Without the natural process of aging and death allowed to operate, the world's population surges. Living space becomes more and more scarce. Natural resources such as gasoline and water soon near depletion. Eventually, governments enact policies aimed at discouraging citizens from taking the cure. The Chinese, for example, require their citizens to have their real birthdays tattooed on their bodies. The United States declares that by taking the cure one forfeits his or her right to social security benefits. As resources become more strained, nations become more militaristic and heavy-handed in a desperate attempt to maintain control and order. Despite the initial enthusiasm for the cure, participants eventually come to acknowledge its dark side. After living for a certain amount of time, with one's biological development arrested at the age one took the cure, many become weary of life. As noted earlier, romances and marriages eventually dissolve given a long enough run. Those who took the cure are also become more and more dismayed as they realize that they must work forever, as they will never qualify for retirement many start looking for a way out. Such dissatisfaction with indefinitely long life leads to emergence of end specialists, professionals who specialize in ending the lives of those who want out. Those who hire end specialists get to choose the means by which they meet their demise. Eventually, the problems become so great that nations including China and the United States deem it necessary to turn nuclear weapons against their own citizens in order to help keep the population under control. The postmortal offers a unique spin on a question everyone asks at some point, what if human beings could live forever? Reflecting on this question, most of us probably turn to thoughts of what we might accomplish given so much time, or how wonderful it would be not to have to lose those we care about. This novel forces us to think about some of the more unsettling consequences of being freed from death, and about the social problems that humanity would face. 
If there is an overarching lesson suggested by the novel it is perhaps this, human life as we now know it is conditioned, or made possible, by death as much as it is constrained and limited by it. It is important to keep this lesson in mind as biotechnology continues to advance. And as we inch closer to living in a world where something similar to the cure described in the novel becomes a reality. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.